Hey there, everybody. Professor Cloud here with our next episode of Professor Plays Immortals of Avium. Uh, in the previous episode, we were we finished off Chapter Four, which was taking us from the uh, battleground to the Palathon, where we are supposedly supposed to be selected to become the next Immortal of Avium. Um, we of course got attacked on the way there along the road. We found a lot of different. Uh, chests and, and things, a lot of different offshoots from the map, which is always fun, a number of secrets, and we cleared a number of what are called Shadow Fanes, which are these kind of different dimensional uh, puzzles and um, fights <clears throat> to allow you to acquire new capabilities. So we increased our uh, health in one of them, we increased our magic capacity in another one as far as being able to use our special magic skills <clears throat> so interesting and then you know, we passed a number of different pieces along that road that were like i'm not able to do anything about this which means it's going to be a lot of opportunity for going back to different areas to clear those things to see if there's anything special that they're uh, keeping from us such as new gear and, and stuff like that so Having a lot of fun so far, I hope you are too, but let's go ahead and jump back in for chapter five for the selection. Okay. The Immortals. We have made it to the Palathon. <clears throat> And apparently, the Hall of Memories. It's a list of the dead. There are so many, no one can remember all their names. I never knew there were that many immortals. Oh no, it's everyone across Avium that fell in the Everwall. The Palathon tracks it somehow, all the way back. You know, we're still not really sure who built this place. A bit morbid, really. Having a massive death list right when you walk in, now that I think about it. Oh, hello. I'm Devin, by the way. Just got back from the front. Jack, stationed at Yilthium Fields the last few weeks. I'm from Serum, originally. Is that right? I've never met anyone from East Lucium. And you still haven't. Said I was from Saren. Ah, nice. A little provincial machismo. Let me show you around, Jack. Promise it's not all a big down. I, uh, really need to get to selection. Absolutely no idea where to go. Come this way. I'll show you. I remember Kirken talking about a Jack from Saren a few times. Said you'd make a great immortal one day. Huh. She said that? No. I'm just trying to calm your nerves, man. <laughs> if you don't mind me asking, how long have you been an immortal? Oh, ages. Well, a few years. But immortal years are like dog years. They stretch on and on. So you're the best of the best? You sound doubtful. It's a cheery disposition. But the Rashanians have sent writs of assassination to every quarter asking for my head. They hate me over there. I'll get some of those writs myself just as soon as I look up what writs are. I'm sure you will, especially as a triarch. We don't get many of those. Well, any of them, actually. So what's the secret? How do you do it? Don't know. I just do. I see. You just do. No need for hard work and discipline when you can just do. Good lesson for the kids. Is this part of selection? You busting my balls? <laughs> no. Selection is much worse. We're almost there. Got another one for group five. No. Oh, stop. He'll be your star pupil. Jack here's the soldier that was crucial to the route at Yilthium Fields. Kirkin's pet initiate? I'm literally standing right here. The path is ready for this group, and I'm not asking her to reconfigure for one more. She'll complain and give everyone in the Palathon nightmares for a week. Get ready. Those doors open, you go in, one at a time. Come on, Zendara. 
You know the path already senses he's here. Okay, why are you talking about it like it's alive? It's not happening, Devon. On the one hand, nightmares brought about by a cranky magical gestalt conchoscape. That's okay, ignore me. It's cool. On the other, a stern lecture from Kirken for playing needlessly hardball. I know which one I'd pick. <coughs> you weren't here for my speech to the selection candidates, initiate. So I'll give you the short version. So it is happening? Shut up. Welcome to the path. Stepping through that door means you think your magic is strong enough to issue a challenge to the Pentasoth. That you fear no judgment or censure for doing so, and that your life word to the ley lines is forfeit if you're found wanting. The really short version? Don't fuck up in there or you won't... <coughs> like, for real? More like absorbed into the path than removed from existence. But don't sweat it. I believe in you. She definitely thinks you're going to die. That's why her face looks like that. But don't let it shake you. In any ways, optimism is a moral imperative. I'm Zandara of House Cadus, Warden of the Path and Oath Sworn to the Immortals by Ancient Treaty. It was nice knowing you, Jack, hero of Yilthium Fields. A smarter man than you would have ended this day on a high note. Isn't she great? She's my favorite. <laughs> Second to Gina, of course. Gina Torres' character, Kirkin. <clears throat> I don't know who the actress is that plays Zendara, but she did a phenomenal job. Okay. Looks like the path is going to be another one of these dimensional puzzle slash fights. Yeah. Here we go. What the hell? See how it is. Ooh, I actually did take a little bit of damage. Whoa, what the hell? God, there's an earth crystal there. Or there was. Spectrals. And these at sun! What are you talking about? Okay, how am I getting hit? There'll be one more. Apparently my aim is off. Ah, good. Thankfully I'm refilled on earth crystals. They let me come in to this with only one. Okay. All right, real quickly. Um, <clears throat> I kind of jumped into this without even really thinking. <clears throat> Sorry, I just was kind of preparing in my head. Oh. There we go. 
I gotta be a little bit careful about my jumps. It looks like I'm jumping a little bit too early. was supposed to happen, apparently. Okay. One more. There's more. I can hear them. Okay, before we do anything, I when I restarted the chapter, it looks like they didn't take my ascension points. And we can't use my ascension points in combat. Great. I think that might be the last one. Ah, chest. I am going to absolutely take my time here. Another chest. Oh, good. They are giving me plenty of earth crystals to collect just in case. So that's two sections done. everything first. What is this? Hover. Oh, okay. So now on the second jump, we can actually hold to hover across a gap. That's nice. I like that. the third. Okay, it's a third one. And then you can pop it again for a fourth or to drop. Uh 
Hmm. There's a chest over there. I'm just trying to figure out what's the best way to get there. Battleground. Yeah, that one, that was a bit rough. Thank God for the shield. Because once they came down on my platform, I, I couldn't, there was no way I was, well, I suppose I could have jumped up and over. I just didn't think to do it. I think I actually have to do it from inside the hand. All right, actually, no, hold on. There's a chest to the left, so I'm gonna go do that first. Feels very weird running on an angle like this. Oh, 
Okay. Not sure that that was really worth the time or effort, but... Okay, whoa. Woo! Oh god, we're still not done. <laughs> Holy crap. What? Caleb, he gave this to Luna on her birthday. Right before everything. It's Saren. Bits of it, anyway. Dibs on the shoes. Caleb? What? First time fumbling about in Seren. What? I grew up here. Don't move shit, bird. Best crab in the Harrows. Kill most. But we both know that's not really crab. How far from here to Trotter's place? <laughs> By a rooftop. He's Saren born and bred, guys. Settle down. Where's your people? I don't know. You need any more? That was the day I met Luna and the others. I guess we're not playing fair anymore. Okay, let's see now that I'm out of... Oh, no, I'm not out of combat. Yeah, I am going to be very blue heavy. Guarantee that. All right, let's see if they'll allow me to. Okay, good. All right, so I have five ascension points. <clears throat> All right, now let's swap to blue real quick. All right, so burst shield, your shield explodes when it breaks. Let's definitely do that. Increases the health of the shield. Let's definitely do that. Increases blue magic power by 20%. I think we do that one, and then let's swap. Let's put a point into red. <clears throat> Decreases the reload time of all sigils by 10%. This is all sigils. So that's important. Increase armor by 15. And... I don't know what corrosive punch is, but let's definitely do the increased armor. So it looks like red is giving us stuff beyond just... It is more so than the other colors, giving us uh, increases in places outside of just its color range. All right, let's go to green. Huh. Oh, one of the ones that I used must have been a twofer instead of a one okay that's fine but hey look we've now got improved actually you know what let me take a quick look and see so our health is at 120 fury mana is at 75 out of 105 yeah because we did use a blast shield uh not a blast shield um it's blast wave and shatter shield uh, blink clip arm. Okay, so our armor is now at 98. It was at 83. Shield health is now at 192, and our blue magic power is now at 57. That's cool. I like that. I like that a lot. All right. Okay. <clears throat> oh, 
Oh, there's a chest. Okay. You know what? I think I'm going to switch to green. Although that's probably... Not. Well, let me look and see where the enemies are coming from. Because if the enemies are going to be close up like those last couple were... something there we go nice I'm gonna want the green Okay, never mind. Blue works fine. <laughs> of course, all of them were uh, melee combat, with the exception of the flyer. but it's fuck huge, so probably a lot. There's just the five of us. Then eventually we might all get really lonely. Who cares? Come on. All right. Oops, Check it on. out. That oh. whole thing? Whole thing. How are we going to defend that whole thing? What? What? We squat a place like that. We need to figure out how to keep it. Nah, it's us. I bought it. How did you... Where did... It's not a mystery, Jack. I saved up. I wanted a house, and now I have one. All of us do. She was so proud that she found us a home. And that... That was the last time I actually had one. Thanks for the reminder. Trying to, I'm really paying attention here to when the enemies start popping out because we know that they're going to. Okay, so it looks like we're getting ready to get something else new. Immolate. Immolate is a dominion, an extremely powerful spell that requires dominion mana to, ca to cast. Build up dominion mana by defeating enemies. Okay. Press Z to cast Immolate and shoot out a powerful beam of Triarch magic. Got it. Okay. Collect Dominion Crystals to quickly fill your Dominion Mana. Okay. Alright, we're still here. Sandrak. And he's giant. Dad's not subtle at all.
yeah. I, I would never have been able to kill her with any other magic type from this distance. Holy crap, that was that was serious sniper shit there. Okay, I guess oh. that's it. Uh, where is everyone? I sent them all home. You're the only one to pass. R really? Follow me, Initiate. Let's head back up. Radiant Health Stone. Health maximum increased. Excellent. Alright, there's a magic crystal over here. I definitely need that. I don't need the health crystal, thankfully. She was right about you. That you'd surprise me. Seems like Kirkin really talked me up to everyone. I don't mean Kirkin. I mean the path. She knows I don't expect much from the unforeseen. Are we heading towards a backhanded compliment, or... We zoomed right past it. Okay. Magni of the Great Houses don't exactly hide their prejudices, do they? Against your kind. We have good reasons. My kind? Wow. You know, just because I, uh, spontaneously exploded with Magnus-level magic or whatever doesn't mean that Don't I- Don't worry, Initiate. I won't let it cloud my judgment of you. You're different. How so? You're one of us now. Sandrak's western incursion has been pushed back to the Sky Islands. Only his harriers remain. Hey, congratulations. And so what now, I hear you ask? Surrounded, but for now unpressed, do we send our forces north to lift the siege at Lavenry? Or fortify the southern front? Marshal our strength, or test its limits? I'll be honest, I don't know which move is best. But I do know, we have reinforcements. We do? She means you, dummy. Welcome, Jack of the House Unforeseen. Newly mantled immortal, champion protector of Lucium, master Magnus of the Order Elite. What words do you have for those under our command? Are you serious? They're waiting for your answer. Don't take five years. <clears throat> Talking about being thrown into the fire. Hey, so, uh, so when I was a kid, I had this friend that wanted to fight in the Everwar. I can't believe I, <laughs> that I used to give her a hard time about it. She never got a chance to, um, well, Rasharn attacked and, uh, well, I don't even have to finish that sentence. Everyone here has a story that starts or ends with Rasharn attacked. And everyone here has survived those stories. But there are so many that didn't. Too many. Their names fill the walls of this place. No more names. No more names. May all of Lucium honor yours until the end of days. Well, bottoms up. <laughs> He's so cool. So, 
What now? This is your party, Jack. Mingle. All eyes are on you. Mingle. Bask, even. What about the stolen artifact? It was like a big, glowy crystal with etchings all over it. We're scouring the archives. Nothing yet. Go enjoy yourself. Get to know some of the people you'll be working with. Or if the pressure to socialize is too much to bear, head to your new quarters and turn in for the night. Let's see. Devin seems nice. For an elite Magnus. And he's taken a shine to you. That's good. Devin's never really been comfortable at the Palathon. Really? I can tell he misses the front. He prefers field work. Soldiering. Huh. Wouldn't have pegged him for that. Devin's our best fighter. That's why we need him back here. So, Zendara. I know. Just saying. <laughs> kind of rained on my parade to get through selection, and then she says, my kind are trash. Dangerous. Anomalies, mistakes, insults to the Pentasad. These last five years, I'm sure you've heard it all. I just figured, I don't know, that there might be more enlightened views among the immortals. I won't make excuses, because there are none. It's an ugly aspect of the Magni dynasties and their rulership across Athium. You already know, the lightless have it worse. So, do we get secret handshakes? <laughs> Several. Seriously though, is there a new manual or something that tells me what my duties are now that, you know... Those come later. Honestly, the Order's traditional training and initiations are... More informal, more agile than they have ever been in the past. It's not ideal, but the current state of the Everwar means most of your education will be in the field. Do I get to finally know what the name is all about? The Immortals? We borrow our name from a more ancient Pentadi order that once practiced here. The Un Avlashud, the Enduring. They had learned to stretch time and live inside it in a way that mortality meant nothing to them. That sounds fake. It probably is. In any case, the Pentadi eventually vanished, but the legends that they had conquered death didn't. Those that founded our order saw no downside in being associated with such power and prestige. So it's branding. Pretty much. <laughs> Good night, sir. Good night, Jack. Okay, well, let's go talk to some people, I guess. Right. Or we can always go home. Or go to our new headquarters, and our new bedroom. Alright, let's see. Who do we want to talk to? I'm not necessarily going to talk to everybody, because I don't want to make this episode hugely long. Uh, who's this guy? I don't know that guy. Alright, let's see what she has to say. Hey. Not now, Initiate. Oh, okay. Yeah, got it. But Kirkin just thought I should break the ice with everyone. Get to know you all, you know. You don't think we've done that already? Sure, but that time... sucked. It's not gonna get any different. Now go and enjoy your party. It's the last one you'll see for a long while. Yeah, that's probably true. Okay. I don't know who that is. Is this the guy that we met? No. I was thinking maybe that was the guy that we met on our way to the Palathon. Oh, this is... Yeah, I'm curious to see what she has to say. Hey, Orfe. What's shaking? We're probably at your graduation party, where we're politely refusing to remove our mask. Or we're discussing Aristea again. Are you sure that's where we are? Forgive us if we aren't, Candle. The years get wet in our head. Hmm. Right. It's the seer part of being a seer, I guess. The kind of time jumpy thing with you. Red, chaos, green, transition. They mixed when we were given our magic by the Pentasad. One lives in our right eye, the other in our left. Causing That's cool. a temporal thingamajig. Got it. And probably at this point I asked to see your eyes. You'll forgive us if we say no, we hope. 
So as a seer, you're what? Like maybe our reconnaissance officer or something? You look for what's coming our way? We work as an intelligence specialist, yes. Remote recon is part of our duties. You're convincing Zandara to let you walk the path, for example. That's back a ways, actually. But Kirkin said you can see the future, too. In theory. Half the time. What? We know, for example, that you must eventually refrain from making covenant with the low beasts of the field. Um, is that code? It sounds like code. Maybe, but Devin's our code breaker, so it's best to ask him. Wait. No, you never do. Sounds like it's settled then. Okay. Good chat, Orfe. That's a very cool way of implementing a seer type mentality by having the red eye, green eye thing. That's really, really cool. I like that. So, what's she make you see? What? The path? Yep. She's long on visions, that one. I spent as much time reliving my father's disappointment in me as I did fighting phantoms of the enemy. Well, I... One more right cock-up like that and you'll never get accepted into the academy. Then what, Devin? Spending the rest of your days conjuring up fertility spells for the county dirt farmers? I gave him the accent like that for effect, by the way. And the volume. In reality, he was quite cultured and hardly ever spoke above a whisper. Uh, horrible. But he's dead now. Dear Pop. My older brother took over from the family business. Rugs. And I'm an awful merchant, so that meant off to the war for me. Were you? The path made sure I knew my true calling is what I'm trying to say. I'm good at war, Jack. Great at it. And I hate that. Now, where were we? You're <laughs> just going to talk over me, aren't you? I don't think so. So what don't I know about Kirkin that I probably should? She ever tell you the story about the arm? It's never come up. Five years and it's never come up. Uh-huh. You and everyone else are just too scared to ask. Fine. So what's with her arm? I haven't asked. Can you not? <laughs> I get the distinct impressions and Dara doesn't like me. At all. She's, well... Not really a big fan of the unforeseen. She made that pretty clear. It's not her best look, I know, but she's royalty. They've always been suspicious of Magni born outside of their jurisdiction. Royalty? No lie. She's a Calthusian princess, our Zendara. Her family still holds the glaive gate despite everything Sandrak's done to that country. Don't worry, Jack. She'll come around. That sounds like a lie. All right, I'll see you around, Devin. Okay, is there anybody else? I don't know who that is. I was really kind of hoping the gentleman that we talked to when we left to head to the Palathon was here. Because I saw him in the cutscene. That's Orfe. Yeah, I don't see him here. I'll let, let, me, let me see if the, I don't think this is him. Captain Soko. No, it is. Okay. He sends Sandrak's vanguard packing and promptly aces selection. You make it seem easy, sir. Please, don't start calling me that. You're an immortal now, sir. There are protocols to follow. Nope. See? Every time you say it, it's just weird. We'll both learn to survive it. I should be going. I just... Thanks, Captain. Have a good night. You too, sir. All right, let's go ahead and head to our new quarters. And collect things along the way, of course. The Ionicus in brief. Just looking to see if I'm missing anything else. Nope. Uh... 
Um, those two are passed out. These guys are floating for no good reason. Uh, notice of admonishment. I am curious about the Ionicus in brief. Our magic is gifted to us through the grace of the Pentasod and of the Ionicus that he controls. Three colors of magic are harnessed and controlled by these floating forms. Their rules sculpted into the ancient ethereal rock. That's kind of cool. Okay. So here are Hold our on. new quarters. These are my quarters? With waterfalls in the middle. Who wants waterfalls in their quarters? Even if they are magically controlled. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome, Jack. I hope you find the quarters to your liking. They were previously used by a Claylish Magnus who had a side hustle as a fishmonger in Grey Vale Plaza. Like they say, you can take the Claylish out of the sea, but you can't, etc. Anyway, I think we got most of the smell out. <laughs> uh, we do have an ascension point that we can spend. I'm curious what this is, so let's take a look, quick look here. Repel. Enemies are knocked back when they attack your shield. Uh, I wanted to look green. Okay. Uh, previously, passively regenerate one segment of fury. Oh, yes, I did want this one. Fury Siphon. Defeating an enemy with any fury spell restores 10% of your maximum health. Nice. Reduce the cooldown on blink. Also nice. Increase the damage of green sigil strikes. Increases the regeneration shred of green sigil strikes. Okay. Oh, hold on a minute. I think... I think green sigil strikes actually do... No. I need to get in it. I need to get an upgraded green sigil. That was one of the other reasons why I didn't want to use anything else during the path trial. Okay, more gold. And I guess we're going to bed now. That was a day. Yes, it most certainly was. And we're on to chapter six. Good morning, Jack. Morning. Which means that's where we're going to end this episode. Uh, that's This was a little bit of a longer episode. We have a num number of big cutscenes, obviously, but the path was cool. The path was a lot of fun. I thought it might have been a little bit long. I thought that they could have removed one of the earlier sections to give more of the section where you're actually back in Saren. Uh, but otherwise, I enjoyed that immensely, and of course, the cutscenes around it are always a lot of fun as well. Uh, so we are now an Immortal of Avium, officially. We have been selected, so it's now, of course, time to start using all of these abilities to our advantage when uh, going out into the field. So we will do that in Chapter 6 and do that in the next episode. And as always, if you are enjoying the content, please make sure to hit the like button, please make sure to hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you next time when Professor plays Immortals of Avian. Talk to you soon.